Hey there guys, I'm Bo Lorenzen and today I'm going to show you a new 180 VR camera. There's a whole bunch of ways you can shoot 180 VR and I'm sure that Google decided they were sick and tired of 360 VR and decided we're going to start shooting two eyes forward, there's no stitching. So they solved a whole bunch of problems but of course in the end it is just stereo video it's not 360 but it's really cool it's easy to work with and one of the great things is of course as i've been talking about before in the simplest incarnation two gopros with a fish eye lens on the front and i found this little bracket here online with two screws on the bottom and a tripod mount you can slap it onto a gimbal and this is ready to go and you can use VR Creator. So VR 180 Creator. And you can take the two outputs as long as you shoot in horizontal, drop it on that and that will output 180 VR. The problem with this is you need to sync the two cameras. You need to keep them exactly aligned. And if you don't, trust me, it's not gonna look very pretty. I have sampled videos that shows the good and the bad online. Anyway, these things, and this is what I'm coming at today. For work, a lot of us are using Canons go through the R5C with the stereo front. By the way, this is like close less than 65 millimeter. And the, when these two are horizontal, it is 68 millimeter. Personally, I don't think those extra three millimeters makes a difference. But that's not what I want to talk about today. This year, or in a couple of months ago, CAF 2 popped onto the market and that is running below. It's a ready to go camera. The two lenses are synchronized. So you don't have the sync problems. You also do not have the problem if the two of them are not aligned correctly. So this is out of the pocket and you push the button, turn it on, take a picture all this to it or shoot video but we already talked about this and it's not alone anymore the market is starting to get more sub one thousand dollar cameras for 180 and here today we're going to take a look at the slam this is a 180 vr 8k camera and by the way for size i'm using my iphone right here to record but this is exactly the footprint of my iPhone 14 Pro Max. So the same length and the same height. So it's a fairly large camera. On the other side here, we have a lens protector. It comes off like that. And here we have up on the front is two lenses that gets us 180 VR. And we have two microphones down here now it is good to have them right here where they are because otherwise you tend to finger them too much and that is not a great thing for you know sound at the end of this camera you have a usb-c the usb-c port is used to charging it it auto detects if you put a usb microphone in here so then you turn off these two microphones and now you get usb sound now up on top you have the shutter button down here you have the normal power on off button for a phone and then you have the volume up and down that can be assigned to functions like on any other phone this is really what is nice about Let me move this here before i knock it off the table <laughs> know me so let's go on the other side here and take a look at it i click on it and it comes on and it is an Android phone. Down the bottom here, we have a gallery and we have, and in here we have, there, here is the camera. Let me see, am I holding it the right way? <laughs> yeah, like that, you can see it there. So now you can see my notepad, camera and everything else in the room times two. And if you notice, the angles between these two notepads are different is because it's two different cameras. 
so we get the 3D effect. You really don't want to be that close to the lens. To start recording, you just tap the screen down, if I can tap it there, and we're running. Now, while we're doing that, over here you see, let me see if I can get that, you have a VU meter right here that shows the amount of sound. You have, of course, the recorded time. And you also have the different information here. I'm going to stop this again. We have 20 seconds of recording. I don't know if you can really see it there, but that is the boom, boom. See the audio comes up and down there. And I have the HDR turned off right now, but this camera is capable of shooting HDR natively out of the box. Um, this is still under development. As you can see, the ISO is not changing or rotating. So it, here it is 30 frames per second. It is 8K out of white balance. Now, if I want to change one of these, I click on the out of white balance. It's right now at auto, but I could go in and select tungsten or fluorescent. Well, that doesn't look right. This is sunset colors, daylight. Let's go back to tungsten, go back to auto. Auto looks much better. Same thing with ISO. You can do auto ISO and you can or you can select the ISO you want. You can also shoot in 6K 60 frames per second if you don't want 8K 30. Of course, in my experience lately, you can put 8K 30 on a project and then do an optical flow up frame to 60 frames per second and get amazing motion. But it's just, I've been experimenting with it and it worked surprisingly well. Up here, it comes, shows how much internal storage is left. And it tells us what we're shooting again here. And we've got 90% battery left. Now, let me show you really quickly here. I click on the menu and I can go up here. We have the mode, the resolution, frame rate, encoding. It is H265, so it's very well optimized. And here's where it gets interesting. Bit rate is 160 Mbps. So that is a fair bit more than what we have gotten accustomed to seeing from the CAF. The CAF and the CAF 2. Let's cruise on down. We have EIS stabilization here. You can turn that on and off. Then you have still photography that only have JPEG. I would like to see it having JPEG different compressions by the time this ships. We have live. This is one of the things that all of these cameras, for some reason, are pre-set up for live streaming. So is this one. Auto detect USB microphone. And here's our microphone volume. I would like to see the volume slider on the record screen next to the VU meter so we can make a faster adjustment. You can add a grid in addition to the level indicator. The language it keeps going to Chinese, but I'm actually an English speaker and I have selected that. So I was about to tell you that we can format the SD card, but we can't. And if you have at all paid attention to the CAF 2, you'll notice one of the really big problems or definitely an issue, the camera is starting to work really well, but high speed, things that's moving fast tends to stutter. And so basically it's getting too much data and then it's running out of data in the pipeline between each keyframe. And after make, filling in so many in between frames, it just stops and jumps to the next keyframe. That's where stutter comes from. And you can very easily see it. So, so a couple of guys and me have been trying every micro SD card we can get our hands on to get cards that has 150 Mbps write speed. They are available, but they're pretty darn expensive. Let's put that over here. And this, well, I was about to tell you about that there were 
in the current firmware, and this is a pre-production unit, there is an option to format SD card. However, that has been canceled. And I think they have made a really good decision. Um, Frederick and I have been chasing down some of the fastest memory cards, SD, micro SD cards we can get, to get a card that can do 150 Mbps write speed. And I think what we're finding out is that even set at 100 Mbps, we're having a hard time recording data fast enough. And we get, we're seeing some stuttering going on in the footage. I'm sure they're developing that firmware, but SLAM has gone the other direction and they put memory inside the camera. Something. So let me read off on my memory list here. So as this starts shipping, it's gonna be available in eight plus 128 gig 256 gig or 512 gig. What I have here is the 256 and I'm getting with OS and everything, I'm getting about just north of 200 gig available to record on. And it's a very, very easy, fast. I'm using Droid on my Mac. With the 160 Mbps record rate internally, there is an UFS 4.0 architecture. Now, out externally, it is a USB-C 3.1, and this port is also a USB display port, so USB-D, meaning you can take an x real pair of glasses and plug them into here with the USB cable, and you can see this in each eye on the X-Real glasses. I'm gonna have to cut some of this out because not all of this is official yet. What we have here is a 380 gram camera, 160 Mbps data rate, shooting 8K, 30 frames per second, 180 VR. Or you can also shoot 8K still shots with it. And, and you notice that at the moment, the tread adapter is below here. It is right between the two lenses, which is exactly where we want it on a camera. If you look here, here's the lenses and here's the tread adapter. So we always want the tripod to be centered on the camera. Now, when they were moving from big cameras and like the CAF, the original CAF camera and UPG, they used the Canon batteries inside. You get a very hefty bulk for the benefit of being able to pop cards and batteries in and out. And we saw that with CAF, they kept the micro SD card, but they went with an internal battery. SLAM has done the same thing. They are going with an internal battery. I have not come close to use it up in shooting about half an hour of video. I have not shot two or three hours, so I honestly don't know. You can power from the outside, um, but I do think they have, it's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. I do think they have struck a really nice compromise here. Click like, subscribe, and, and please go grab your VR headset and watch the sailing of the, the sailboat sailing in Thailand video. That was shot with these two GoPro cameras and actually came out really good. The two of them was aligned correctly. I wish I had had this with me, but I might've been more afraid since these are waterproof. I might've been more afraid drowning this camera. It's a pre-production. Oh, pricing. So it's pre-tax. Under $1,000 is the current target. So we expect to see this in the beginning of 2025, shipping for under $1,000 pre-tax. So depending on where you are in the world, you might get hit with 
50% tax or you might not have to pay any tax at all. It really depends where we are in the world. And sometimes coming from Denmark, thank you for watching. Click subscribe, have a great day and a happy holidays if we don't talk before. I don't know if you can see this. I'm looking at the screen on the phone. See that line right here? That is the horizon line. So tilting it, it will go green once it's level. And it will, so when it's perfectly straight, it will be green. And it will also show you if it's rolled. So you can check pitch and roll on that line. I like this little camera.